Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So as a companion episode to last week's video, all about the mistakes to avoid for better long lens landscape photos, I wanted to make this video here today about composition specifically as it relates to the use of telephoto lenses for landscape photography. It seems that the majority of the, of the compositional information that exists today for this genre of photography, it seems that it's, it always revolves around the use of a wide angle lens. And oftentimes a telephoto lens is thought to be a tool that is only used for, I guess, wildlife photography or maybe sports photography. And, but out of all the, I guess, compositional tips and tricks and the best practices associated with both a telephoto lens and a wide angle lens, there are some commonalities between the two, but there's also quite a few differentiating factors between them as well. And that's really the purpose of this week's video is to discuss the worst composition mistake to avoid when using a telephoto lens for landscape photography and how best to solve for it. Now, I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I can attest to the fact that the resolution to the following mistake was perhaps the single largest turning point or light bulb moment for me when I started to use a long lens for my landscape photos. And what's so interesting about this mistake is that it's actually a culmination of uh, multiple smaller mistakes that when summed together creates a much larger issue that I call scene stuffing. And before we jump right into exactly what scene stuffing is, it's important to first recognize two very important characteristics of both a wide angle lens and a telephoto lens. So to jump right into it, the first thing related to a wide angle lens is that it will always exaggerate the distances between elements in your scene. So here's a good example right here where the uh, the foreground, which is the, uh, the cactus right here, and the midground, which is the light hitting this path, and the mountains in the background, this distance is looks substantially longer than it actually was when I was on location. I didn't walk it off when I was on location, so I don't know exactly how far away the cactus was from the mountains, but it looks substantially farther away in this image because I was using a wide angle lens. Here's another example right here from the Oregon coast where, where I'm standing right here. It looks like the sea stacks could be maybe 100, 150 yards away, but in all actuality, these sea stacks were maybe only about 20 yards away, maybe 25 yards away from where I was standing. But because I was using a wide angle, a 16, 30, 16 to 35 millimeter lens to be more specific, it just really exaggerated the distance in that scene. Now on the opposite side of that is a telephoto lens, which actually compresses the distance in a scene. Here's an example right here, where once again, I'm not 100% sure exactly how far away these monuments are in the background from where I was standing, but this image, it doesn't look like they're that far away, maybe a, a half mile away, maybe a mile away, but it, in all actuality, those monuments were many, many, many miles away from where I was actually standing. So that's the compression, that's the, the fact that a telephoto lens will always compress distances together. I have one final example right here where you have this man standing on the uh, the, the volcanic uh, shoreline right through here and then you have the start of the Nepali coast in the background. It looks so close it almost looks like he could just dive right into the water and swim across to the other side. It would only take a few minutes but in all actuality this distance right here had to be over a mile away between where he's at and the start of the Nepali coast but because it was a telephoto lens it just compressed those distances together. Now the other very important uh, thing to remember or thing to uh, recognize is the fact that a wide angle lens has a very large wide field of view and a telephoto lens has a very narrow field of view. So here's a good example. Once again, shot with a 16 to 35, a wide angle lens of Yosemite Valley. This is a huge scene and the only way to capture it in a single shot is with a wide angle lens. Here's another uh, image right here from Moab. Once again, this scene stretches for many, many, many miles. And I shot this with a 16 to 35. So it's that very wide field of view that a wide angle lens has. And as far as a telephoto uh, lens, the field of view for that is much more narrow. Here's an example here from, uh, from once again, from Yosemite Valley. This is Bridal Veil Falls, but you can just see that the field of view is substantially more narrow or smaller than that of a wide angle lens. Here's another example right here from West Virginia. The distance between the, this tree and this tree over here is probably only maybe 30 yards. And as and you can just tell that it's just a much more narrow field of view than that of the wide angle lenses. Now, when I first got into landscape photography, the very first lens I purchased was a wide angle lens. I think a lot of landscape photographers, when they first start out, that's the lens they gravitate for, gravitate towards. It's the lens you most commonly hear associated with landscape photography. And it's kind of just common sense, really. You know, you're photographing huge landscapes, so you need a big field of view to capture it. 
So you get your wide angle lens and you start using it and you wanna get better at it. So you research compositional techniques that um, can be applied towards your wide angle lens. And then you start to use that and you get a little bit better at it, applying those compositional best practices to your wide angle lens. And then maybe a year or so later, you pick up a telephoto lens. And then you start applying those same compositional techniques that are designed for a wide angle lens and you try to apply them towards a telephoto lens. And this is kind of where the, the scene stuffing uh, occurs. So if you ask yourself, you know, what are some of the most common, I guess, wide angle lens compositional techniques? So things like looking for leading lines, looking for re repeating patterns, looking for strong foreground elements, midground elements, background elements to create that depth in the photograph. And here's a good example right here where you got a nice leading line and S curve of this river right through here. Got a nice foreground element here, mid ground, got a lot in the mid ground really. You got the autumn trees in the background, the cascading river. This image has a ton of depth in it, has the leading lines, has the foreground, mid ground, and the background. So it's got a bunch of different uh, elements to this scene right here. And what happens a lot of times is you start to, to try and apply all of these same techniques to a telephoto shot. And remember, the wide angle lens has got that wide field of view. That means there's a ton of real estate to squeeze in all of those different techniques, all of those different elements. But when you're using a telephoto lens, that field of view shrinks. And if you still try and apply all of those same techniques into a much smaller field of view, that's where the scene stuffing occurs. And you, be, and you, and you create just kind of a, an overly busy, kind of unorganized, distracting image. Now there are a couple different ways to avoid this. I believe there are six different things that, that really helped me. And the very first one is just go out and find yourself a very strong subject. Finding a strong subject I think is a lot of times the anchor of a great telephoto landscape image. And here's a good example right here. This is one of my, my favorite images of one of my favorite bridges in San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge, which is a very, very strong subject. And just uh, zooming in on it and just making sure that this is the story of the overall photograph right here. So finding that strong subject. Here's another example right here. This is Yosemite Valley. This is the uh, El Capitan here. We have Half Dome in the background. And just finding these very strong subjects right here and zooming in on them and, that, and making that the, the, the main character, the, the big supporting detail, the supporting element, the, the star of the show, if you will, of your photograph. Now, the second thing you can do is isolate and avoid distractions. It's one of the biggest benefits of having a super telephoto lens, or not even a super telephoto, just a, a regular telephoto lens, is having the ability to zoom in and isolate your strong subject and remove the distracting elements from your scene. Here's a great example right here from, uh, from South Carolina, where I had this S curve of, the, uh, of this dirt road right here. And I could have tried to apply, could have tried to apply some uh, wide angle lens techniques here. There were some big rocks on the side here. I could have gotten down really close to one of them and put a wide angle lens on to anchor the scene. But it just became, it, it just didn't work quite as well with a wide angle lens. But using a telephoto lens to kind of compress the, the distances of this road together, this became a much more impactful image. And I was able to isolate the road and get rid of a lot of the distractions around the road right through here. And I absolutely love this image with the sun kind of coming through right through here, but just isolating your subject and avoiding those distractions. And I, I know I showed this image right here before as well. There's half dome with the, the setting sun just illuminating the, this last uh, remnants of winter right through here, but just zooming all the way in, isolating the, the main subject and just removing all of the distractions from your scene is just a great best practice to get into. Now, perhaps one of my favorite things to do with a telephoto lens is to focus on the small details. It's one of the most beautiful things about the, this focal length or the extreme focal length is that you have the ability to, to reach out and just grab intimate details in your scene. And just finding the small details that really grab your eyes, it's, it's a ton of fun. And this is another image from Yosemite where you had just the, this crashing waterfall behind these trees and it just made for such an impactful image. I, I just absolutely love it. But just focusing on the, 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 uh, the small details of a scene. Here's another example right through here, same kind of concept. This is, uh, uh, I believe Yosemite Falls right through here. 
just crashing down. It's got some interesting light on it as well. It, but just looking for the, the small details in the scene is just a great way to use your telephoto lens to its maximum capacity. So finding that strong subject, isolate the subject, remove the distractions, look for the small details in the scene. You know, it doesn't always have to be an intimate scene, but that's just something that you can look for when you're on location. It's just for the, those small details that uh, might catch your eye in, uh, in the actual uh, composition that you're photographing. Now, the next thing that you can do, and this is something that I absolutely love to do, is look for interesting light. Because once again, that telephoto lens gives you the ability to reach out into your composition and grab things that you normally wouldn't have access to with a wide angle lens. So just looking for any type of interesting light. This is another image from the, the Nepali coast where everything is just silhouetted right here, but the entire image is all about the light right here. And if this was so far away, if I put this with a, if I shot this with a wide angle lens, the Nepali coast would have just looked just very tiny and it just wouldn't look near as impactful and the light would not have looked uh, nearly as powerful as it does with this uh, telephoto lens on. So just looking for the interesting light, these are some cool light rays in a valley that I was in in North Carolina. I just liked how they were illuminating these, uh, these pine trees right through here. So looking for, for dappled light or any kind of contrasting light is a ton of fun to do. So wherever shadows meet light, that's a great opportunity to put on the long lens and zoom in and just try and capture that contrasting light or that interesting light. Now the fifth thing that you can do is look for interesting uh, atmosphere. So whether it's clouds rolling over a mountain or fog or mist, here's a good example from a, uh, a trip a couple years ago to Moab where we couldn't even see this cliff face. It was completely enshrouded with uh, fog. And then all of a sudden, the peak of it just revealed itself. And I just put on a, a, a long lens and just captured this one image right through here. But looking for that interesting atmosphere is a great way or is a great thing to isolate when using a long lens. And here's another good image right here, or in my opinion, it's a good image. I just love the silhouetted palm trees. It's from Santa Barbara. Just a lot of uh, fog and mist and sea spray as the sun is rising behind these mountains right through here. I actually shot this with uh, my old 100 to 400 and I had a teleconverter on it as well. So I think this is around 600 millimeters. But it just, I just love the atmosphere and how it plays against the silhouette of these palm trees. So looking for interesting atmosphere is another fantastic thing to do with the telephoto lens. So finding strong subjects, isolating and avoiding distractions, focusing on the small details, look for interesting light, look for interesting atmosphere, and last and certainly not least, and probably the most important of the bunch, is to keep it simple. It's one of my favorite things about a telephoto lens is that a wide angle lens, when I think about it, I think it can be a little bit confusing sometimes with that wide field of view. You've got all these supporting supporting characters in your scene. You got the foreground, the midground, the background, leading lines, repeating patterns, depth you're trying to create. There's a lot of things you're trying to position in that really wide field of view. But the telephoto lens in that narrow field of view, things can sometimes be a little bit simpler. I'm not saying telephoto composition is a piece of cake because it's not, but I find it to be a little bit more simplistic as that of a wide angle lens. So keep things simple. Here's one of my favorite images from my trip to Yosemite uh, last summer of Yosemite Falls. This is a classic shot right through these pine trees. I wasn't trying to get cute with the image. Just keep it very simple. Just zoom in, frame the shot and capture the photograph. And here's another image right here in Oregon, just capturing the base of these waterfalls right here. I love the color contrast between the autumn leaves and the green, and then the, uh, the bright white of the waterfall crashing to the, uh, the pool below. And that's one of my favorite things to do with the telephoto lens is zoom into falling waterfalls or the base of the waterfall. I just love being able to capture the, the power of falling water up close and personal. A lot of times the only way to capture that is with a telephoto lens. So I hope those six uh, tips can help you to uh, to resolve the, the compositional mistake that I encountered the most when using a telephoto lens, which is scene stuffing. So hopefully that's something that you can apply to your long lens landscape photos moving forward. Now, before I do wrap up this week's video, I do wanna say a big thanks again to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website needs.
Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I hope you did enjoy this week's video. If you did enjoy it, if you could give it that thumbs up, definitely helps the channel perform better, helps the video perform better as well. And, and ring the bell notification above as well, just that way you are notified whenever I do upload. And if you're not subscribed already, if you could subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video, and I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.